Developing wide and strong shoulders is something many people train for, but it's not always easy to make significant muscle growth progress in the shoulders. What type of shoulder exercises should you do and how much shoulder training do you need? In this video, I will discuss three training tips to help you improve your muscle growth progress in the shoulders, so you can elevate shoulders training to the next level and start making the progress you desire. The shoulder muscle, also known as the deltoid, can be divided into three regions your front, side, and rear deltoid. The front deltoid is responsible for shoulder flexion, which occurs when you raise your arms to the front. The side delt is responsible for vertical shoulder abduction, which is raising your arms to the side, while the rear deltoid is responsible for horizontal shoulder abduction, and that refers to raising your arms back. In order to have wide and well-developed shoulders, we need to target every head of the shoulders. This brings us to the first step when it comes to effective shoulders training, and that is to make sure that you train your shoulders from a variety of angles. If we look at the way most people train their shoulders, they over-rely on shoulder press variations. Using exercises like the seated dumbbell shoulder press and standing barbell overhead press is great, but these movements mostly train shoulder flexion, making shoulder press variations quite front dominant. This is why it's common for people to have overdeveloped front deltoids, but then struggling with maintaining that round shoulder look, which comes from also developing the side and rear deltoids. We need a healthy balance of front, side and rear deltoid exercises in our training program. For every shoulder press variation you do in your training, I would also incorporate a side and rear deltoid raise in order to have that balanced shoulder development. Just look at your shoulder anatomy and this will make sense. The side deltoid is really what's responsible for giving you that round shoulder look, while the rear deltoid wraps around the backside of your shoulders, making the shoulders look more thick. So if we want to develop well-rounded shoulders, we need to look beyond just doing shoulder press variations. Having a focus on doing more side and rear deltoid isolation work is something I have personally benefited from in the past two years of training. I now just train the shoulder press once a week. In combination with also doing different bench press variations, my front delts get sufficient stimulation in a training week, so any additional shoulder work I do in my workouts are dedicated to the side and rear delt raises. To give you an idea of how this looks in a structured training program, see the following example. As you see, we have one shoulder press, one side raise, and one rear delt fly variation. There's an equal distribution amongst the focused shoulder exercises in terms of training volume. If you train each shoulder exercise with 4 sets, this will provide 12 weekly sets of shoulder training volume, which is a good volume range for intermediate trainees. Beginner trainees can scale their shoulders volume down a bit by doing 3 sets per shoulder exercise, while more advanced trainees can add an extra shoulder exercise or two in their training if they desire to train the shoulders with increased volume. Now that we know that it's good to look beyond just doing shoulder press variations, but also incorporating side and rear deltoid isolation work, let's look into how we can properly perform these isolation exercises for the side and rear delts. Let's start with discussing how to grow the side deltoids. The side deltoid is arguably the most important shoulder head when it comes to aesthetics. If building more round shaped shoulders is the goal, this is the head you want to develop. The most popular and simple way to train the side deltoids is by doing side raises. After all, the main function of your side delts is vertical shoulder abduction. This is exactly what the side raise trains. But there is more to doing side raises than just raising your arms to the side, because if done incorrectly, the side raise can actually become quite a front deltoid dominant movement. This happens when you stand completely upright during side raises and raise your arms to the side. The resistance will be more aligned with the front fibers of your deltoids, causing the front delts to work harder. With two simple cues, we can make sure that your side deltoids are taking on most of the work during side delt raises. First, we want to lean forward slightly while doing side raises. This will align the resistance better with your side delt fibers. Secondly, we want to raise the arms up diagonally in a scapular plane. This places the side delts in a stronger position to contribute to the lift. Another mistake you want to avoid is keeping your arms bent while doing side delt raises. When you bend your arms and do side raises, the resistance is placed more on your rotator cuffs and less on the side delt muscles themselves. We want to keep the arms extended with just a slight bend at the elbow to make sure your side deltoids are actually taking on the work. If done properly, the side delt raise will provide excellent benefits for developing wider shoulders. Now, up to the third training tip, which is about isolating the rear deltoids effectively. We also want to focus on targeted rear deltoid work to help us further enhance this area. The rear deltoids also get some stimulation in most of your back exercises. 
The main function of the rear delts is horizontal shoulder abduction. This gets strained during row variations as well. So whenever you train a cable or barbell row, your rear deltoids will get stimulated as well. Especially row variations in which you keep the elbow slightly flared, there will be good resistance place on the rear delts. But still, additional rear delt isolation work is beneficial if optimizing rear deltoid development is the goal. A simple way you can train the rear delts is through a traditional rear delt fly. It's common for people to focus on protracting and retracting the scapula during rear delt flies. But we actually want to have little movement in the shoulder blades to prevent the strong upper back muscles from taking over the movement. The rear deltoid attaches to the spine of the scapula, but it does not attach all the way back to the midline of your body. So you don't get an extra rear deltoid training benefit by squeezing your shoulder blades. Keeping your shoulder blades somewhat protracted and then doing rear delt flies helps you better engage the rear delts since you prevent the traps and rhomboids from taking over the movement. This applies to cable rear delt fly variations as well. Keep the scapula protracted to help better isolate the rear delts. So if we summarize this video, we come to a few simple conclusions. First of all, we want to train your shoulders from a variety of angles so that we can train the front, side and rear delt fibers effectively. For every shoulder press variation you do, also incorporate an isolation side and rear deltoid exercise. When it comes to side raises, aim to lean forward slightly and raise the dumbbells up in the scapular plane. For rear delt flies, keep your scapula somewhat protracted while doing rear flies to better engage the rear delts. And that was all for today's video. I hope you now have a better understanding of how you can go about your shoulders training. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Also, if you found this video helpful, then leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and I will see you in that next video.